The first time I visited Ephesus was in 1975, and the nearby village then of Seljuk only had one single hotel in it that had electricity and running water. I spent three days at Ephesus and saw a total of 12 people. Mainly there were animals running around. Now it was January, so there were no guards there, the ticket booth was closed down, and the reason why I spent three days there is I couldn't get a ride out of town. I was hitchhiking. So few people actually came to the site. And I thought, I don't see why anybody comes here. There's nothing to see. This is what the theater looked like in 1975. In 1985, they had uncovered a little bit more. And then, finally, in the late 1990s, they had uncovered the full extent of the theater. Nowadays, Boats come to the nearby port city of Kushidasi. And here, up to a dozen tour li cruise liners a day unload passengers and bus them to nearby Ephesus. In the high season, there are thousands, literally, and sometimes 10,000 tourists a day that come to Ephesus. And aside from Istanbul, Ephesus is the most heavily visited tourist site in the country of Turkey. And this is as it should be. Ephesus is of interest to the classicist because of its Greco-Roman ruins. It did boast one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Artemisian, of which unfortunately only one column still stands. Christians find it interesting because it was here that Paul had his famous book burning. Ephesus is associated with John, the writer of the Gospel and the Apocalypse. Ephesus was one of the seven churches of Asia. And Ephesus is associated with the life and death of the Virgin Mary. And for students of Islamic architecture, there is the Mosque of Isabay. And for students of Byzantine architecture, there is the Basilica of St. John, which was at one time the fifth largest church in the Christian world. So the question is, how did this premier city of the ancient world, boasting of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, the Temple of Artemis, or the Temple of the Great Diana, the Artemisian as it's called, how did this great commercial and banking emporium and major port meet its end? And the answer that is usually given is that the Christians destroyed pagan Ephesus. And it was a myth which even the Christians of the Middle Ages had come to believe. But that is not true. Ephesus was still a premier Christian city, and in the 5th century, two councils of the church were held at Ephesus because of its size, splendor, and wonder. So this class is going to be a history of the rise and fall of the city of Ephesus. The problem was that this area was already settled, not by Greeks any longer, but by Carians and Lydians. And they had here, where it circled, a shrine, an altar, to a goddess called Kubaba. We know Kubaba by the Greekization of the name Kibbele. Now, who is this Kubaba, and how, why is her shrine important? Well, the shrine was located right here, where the Temple of the Great Diana would be located someday. But Kubaba, or Kibli's pedigree, goes back to the time of the Hittites, to the Bronze Age. Kubaba, or Kibli, is the female goddess seated on the right. She's on a throne on the back of a bull. She is talking to the storm god on the left, who is riding on the back of a lion. Kubaba will serve many purposes religiously. She is mainly in charge of animal fertility. She is what is known as the mistress of the beasts. But she also sends disease and cures. She gives oracles. She lives in the mountains of Anatolia. And she is said to have been born out of a rock. When the Greeks get hold of her, they will dignify her appearance somewhat. But as mistress of the animals, you will always see her with two usually ferocious animals at either side. The Greeks will eventually associate her with Artemis and the Romans with Diana, who is also mistress of the hunt and is usually portrayed with animals at her side. Well, this goddess, Kubaba Kibli, our Artemis and Diana, had a shrine and altar right here, where the swamp 
is located. And this is the shrine, which is called Artemisian A, located number one on your page. This is the shrine that would give Ephesus her fame and importance in later days. But as yet, there is only a shrine and a simple altar. Now, when you, we think of a shrine, don't think of a temple in the Greek sense of a shrine. Nearby the city of Ephesus, there is another site contemporary with this Artemisian A. It's called Midas City. And this is the shrine to Kibbele there. It is merely the face of a rock that is carved into the facade of a temple, and probably in the niche there was a statue to Kibbele. Or another place at the same site, this sculpted little protuberance of a rock. Remember, Kibbele is born of a rock. And this is an intentionally smoothed down stone that was probably sacred to Kibbele. Or perhaps this protruding rock. Again, steps cut into it, and probably on top was a sacrificial platform for the animal sacrifice to the goddess. Whatever was here at the site was destroyed around the year 680 BC when the Chimerians, a barbarian group, sacked the city of Ephesus.